Yes, it, it on? you're all set. Mm -hmm. Okay, I will call the, the February 14th, 2023 regular meeting of the Mill Creek City Council to order. We'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. How about Councilmember Stecker? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Who's doing roll call? Is it Naomi? Uh, yes, Mayor Holtzclaw. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Vanel. Here. Council Member Cavalieri. Here. Council Member Steckler. Here. Council Member Allison. Here. Council Member Duque. Here. Council Member Paddock. Present. Okay, audience communication. We'll start in the audience. Ms. Heidel, name, address, and three minutes, please. Barb Heidel, 1401, 144th Place, Southeast Mill Creek. Thank you, Mayor. I would like to express my gratitude to all the city employees, from the police chief and his police force, to our city manager and all his employees. Their kindness, helpfulness and friendly attitude make it such a fantastic place to volunteer. I just wish to express how thankful I am for allowing, for being allowed the opportunity to work with an awesome group of people. Each day, I am so happy to come to City Hall, whether it be North or South, to give my all. I just hope I can spread my happiness with letting them all know I appreciate all of them every day. It is my total joy to add a little smile to their lives by letting them know I care and want the best for them all. Thank you. Thank you, Barb. Happy, Va Happy Valentine's Day. Anyone online like to address the council? Okay, I only see Will and he shook his head negatively. It brings us to presentations. Let's talk first about city accomplishments. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, I don't have a presentation. So I, in your packets, you'll see that we've listed all the um, accomplishments, the kind of high level that we put together for 2022. Just wanted to cover those briefly. Um, if you have any questions at the end or want to comment, uh, uh, we can take care of those as well. Um, accomplishments, I think uh, that it kind of equates to success. A lot of things we did in 2022, just there's so many things that we accomplished. Uh, we had our challenges as well, failures. Um, it was a big learning experience over the course of the year, even at the beginning end of, end of 2021, but we'll get back to that later. I'll kind of bring it back in history a little bit. Um, some of the key, key things I wanted to bring up first was just kind of how and, and why we were successful. Uh, I know this is kind of a cliche. We've talked about this and maybe one last time we could just emphasize kind of how important it was um, that we all came together and, and really made things happen and it wasn't easy. Um, kind of inherently we focused on our mission. Um, we revised it this year. The big thing was just making sure that we, we've serviced our public. And I think that's the, the goal that we had ultimately across the entire team. Um, all the members of our management team, all employees, we were just totally focused on providing those basic core services to our public. And, and that's pretty much it. Just make sure it kept in the boat afloat. Um, that was really important. Um, not being fancy, just keeping it really simple and uh, just, just focusing on, on those core, core services. Um, teamwork and collaboration. It wasn't easy. It was pretty chaotic, you know, towards it, pretty much the whole entire year, but we managed the chaos pretty well. Um, and that's kind of the frightening part because this year we'll be a little more organized, organized as we move forward, but we were really good at expediting things, making things happen last minute. Um, we didn't have much lead time on a lot of the projects we worked on, a lot of the tasks, but we pulled it together. Um, it wasn't easy working together at some points in time, but you know we saw past that and just kept moving forward, even when we had our backs against the wall. Um, we had a great re respect for each other as we work together moving forward, uh, the work, working relationships. The thought is, you know, once you come in that door, um, you respect everybody for their 
relationships that you have in a working environment. Put aside your personal values and everything else, but it's the work that we have to do is what's really important. Um, we took responsibility for our actions. That was huge too. Um, we made our mistakes and we acknowledged it. Um, each one of us, every time something happened, you know, we took responsibility. I think that was a key part of it as well in acknowledging that um, others made mistakes as well. Um, and we never backed down, kept on pushing forward. Um, always saw that North Star and uh, just kept moving forward. And and, and uh, every time we faced something, we, we were able to overcome it. Some of the things I wanted to do is also recognize kind of that all the individuals that were involved in all of 2022 um, are past and current council members for their support and your support over the course of the year. I think that's important. Um, I have memories of even our old council members and some of them have supported me over that time. I think it's really important. Um, council member Vaughn and some others. Um, city employees, our extended leadership team, Lane Powell, kept us in between the lines the whole time. I think that was really important. Um, I can remember, I have numerous stories about things um, that we had to work on. And it's, a lot of those things are on this list that we're about to uh, present to you. The families that supported all of us as well. I mean, mentally and physically, we were not always at certain places. We These are things that our, our families uh, had to, had to work with and deal with over that time. So I think that's something that has to be acknowledged as well. Um, community members. We started reaching out to community members, our partners as well. And um, they all trusted us. They were patient, understanding kind of kind of what we were going through. And then because we were just transparent and, and truthful and, and it worked. So um, this year will be a lot different as we as we bring it to the next level. Um, so I'll just go into the, into the accomplishments for 2022. And the first one is fire services. Our annexation in the South County Regional Fire Authority was successful, 75% uh, voter approval. Um, Lane Powell was key, Liz Loomis, Karen Reed, who's in our, our, who is in our audience right now. Um, just a whole team, Director Todd, who is a point of contact throughout the entire project, uh, working through the real estate transaction figuring out how we're gonna get the fire apparatus, uh, site inspection, some things, something that we still need to work on. You know, we now have a fire marshal, an in-house fire marshal in City Hall North. Um, he'll keep us in line in terms of our um, uh, fire inspection services going forward. Facilities, we are reopened City Hall. Uh, you can't imagine the number of emails and calls that we received regarding masking, our COVID at the time policy, which is now a plan, and all the things that we had to work through to ensure that uh, we had to keep our employees safe. And as you recall, the reason why we opened City Hall a lot earlier in a lot of local municipalities is because we did have that policy in place. So. That was uh, something that we worked through and um, it was a big thing when we opened the front doors. Um, uh, we increased our passport services and, and then the public was a lot happier with kind of where we were in terms of our masking policy and it was now it's optional. Um, we installed the new AV system and it's working pretty well. We just need to get the council members to keep using the mic mics sometimes or, but say but no it's it's a great system thanks to uh our IT manager Joe Sokolowski for uh leading that project and uh I think it's turned out pretty well um we established a police substation uh, we're currently working on executing a lease right now the build out will occur plans are for completion in July is estimated. Um, they're starting to work on it. The, 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 I think the plumbing and all the stuff that goes underneath the ground right now. So um, they're working on that. We have 24 hour signs at the, at the, at, at, um, that we put up recently over at the farm as well to um, 
monitor the parking outside the in, on the public spaces as well. Um, we're developing, uh, we developed a plan. Uh, we began developing a plan to use the ARPA funding. Um, I call it this, the CRPB, which is the Community Revitalization, Preservation and Beautification Program. But we, but we actually named it uh, during one of our presentations. And, and um, going forward, that's how we'll, we'll, be, we'll recognize that program. Um, that program, of course, as you know, will, be, will fund improving city operations and infrastructure, um, probably past our 40th anniversary, which will be September of this year. On the legislative side, we established a legislative committee consisting of our lead, Mayor Pro Tem Vignal, Councilmember Allison, and Duque. We had our first meeting today, um, and we'll update you more um, later in the uh, agenda. We established the, states, uh, the city's state legislative agenda for 2023 and 2024. Uh, it's an evolving list of priorities, which uh, we'll elaborate more on later in. Um, this session. Uh, we commenced the process uh, in 2023 of putting that legislative agenda together. And um, the next one is that we held our first council retreat uh, in 2022, in March of 2022. And that's the first one held since 2018. So we institutionalized that and going forward into the future years, we'll continue holding um, that um, strategic uh, council retreat. Networking and staffing, we held our first State of the City Address in 2022. Um, it was an event provided, uh, monitored, uh, moderated by Kathy Coffey last year. It was a success. Uh, we'll work on getting more eyeballs on that. This year, um, a new ad addition to the state of the city is a, uh, for our police department, for Chief White. And um, so we'll have that implemented in February as well, in addition to the State of the City. We reestablish relationships with key partners, and um, along with that, is why I provide quarterly updates to um, a lot of those partners uh, every quarter in January, April, um, July, and October of every year. That's the plan. Um, a lot of those key partners include the uh, uh, Panels Group, Chamber of Commerce, Kiwanis, Rotary Club, Snow Isle of Snohomish County. And we will continue creating new relationships too with partners that will add value to the city of Mill Creek and where we can create those mutually beneficial relationships to get feedback on how we're doing um, and to just communicate kind of where the city's at. And so they are more informed about um, what's going on on our end. Um, it's been very beneficial for us. We've, we're learning a lot of things for that. For example, Snow Owl. Um, there are a lot of um, things that they're working on into the future that they're thinking about, and they're kind of reaching out to us to kind of find out kind of what's going on on our end. Um, we established relationships. Um, one of the key ones was with our Ask Me represented employees. Um, we're kind of halfway there on the union side of things, but um, that's a big step. Um, having a good relationship with our union is critical for us moving forward. Um, we got to continue making things work um, positively, having our workforce um, continually making things happen, integrating contracting services and, and just making sure that um, our employees are treated well. So the union it was a big part of our success uh, last year is creating that relationship. And that's, that was a big accomplishment by our acting uh, HR manager. Uh, we improved on employee engagement, retention, and our culture citywide. Um, last year was it was a challenging year. Uh, coming out of COVID, uh, the Great Resignation, you know, looming recession, a lot of things were a challenge, and everything just created an atmosphere. Um, and just having to hire back employees was a was 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 something that um, was an uphill battle. So. Um, and the culture, the declining culture came with that. But as we moved forward, started hiring positions, incidentally, things started to improve. And, and 
um, thanks to the team, everything got much better over time. Um, we're still working on the culture, the wellness program. We have a recognition program as well uh, that we also will be uh, focusing on in 2023. We had some key hires. Um, first, I'll kind of bring us back to 2021, though, because I think what's important is also to recognize um, a few months after I started is uh, how many employees we were down. And we had an outbreak at the end of 2021. We had, I think, at least 10 COVID cases at one time. Um, we were on the brink of sinking, it felt like. Um, having officers on the street was very limited. It was tough, but thanks to Chief White, he held the police side of it and kept the city safe. And I think that was a big part of um, our success in 2021. It was a challenge, but um, and looking back, I don't know how we did it, but um, it was a combined, combined effort by the entire staff. Um, at the end of 2021, it was a big, was a big uh, accomplishment I felt on the city side was uh, appointing uh, our current chief as an acting chief. And uh, um, I wanna give him kudos for um, pulling through at that point in time, because that was probably one of my most challenging moments was after I was um, appointed as acting, um, not knowing kind of what to do in terms of the staffing level, which we were down by eight at that time. I think down to about 15, but not, if I'm not mistaken, or close to that. So um, just the first responders, I think that's really important to recognize those individuals and all of our other employees. We talk a lot about the leadership team and the management team, but it's, it's the other 65% of our employees that really are, are equally important as well. We could have done it with all of them. So, um, as you know, we hired the city manager position was filled, the deputy city manager, the finance director was filled at the end of this uh, last year. Uh, and Chief White was also appointed um, uh, last year as well. So there were a lot of hires in, in 2022, a total of about 19. Uh, probably three, two to three more to being of this year. So we're close to being fully staffed from a budget level. And um, we'll be assessing a few more this year, but we're pretty much uh, fully staffed, very close to, to being that, getting to that point. Um, committee events. Last year was a big year for events. Um, I think our first Veterans Day uh, since 2019, we had a chance, marketing and communications had a chance to manage all of those events throughout the year. Um, now we have a defined list of events, city sponsored and uh, the ones that we do support or partner with local uh, organizations. So um, we have our pretty nailed down this year. So we're excited to have, have um, um, those presented to us over the course of the year as well. Um, some of them that I'll mention is Festival of Trees, Tree Lighting, uh, party in the parks, uh, just to name a few. And then some others that where we do partner is run of the mill, uh, chamber festival and, uh, oh, pianos on Main. Oh, pianos on Main. That's right. Um, coffee chats. So we continue our coffee chats with mayor, mayor pro tem, uh, two events held, um, Last year was our community uh, co-cogier and senior center. Um, we established a, um, yeah, on the finance side, we established a finance committee. Um, very important um, to provide analysis, advice, and to oversight, to provide oversight to our, our current staff. I think going forward, as we start to um, focus more on cost management of our operating structure. We start to look for ways to generate a little more revenue. Uh, it'll be, I think, more important that we um, have more uh, engagement with that committee as we move forward so that uh, we can figure out ways that uh, it's gonna be challenging, I think, moving forward, given that um, not just inflation, but just bringing the city back to where we once were. I think we're still, um, um, down a little bit in terms of terms of positions, but uh, um, mostly on the um, 
public works and, and partially the police side, but I think we're we're um, we're on the right track. But I think going forward, we're going to need um, it's going to be a combined effort with with the finance committee. So it's it's great, it's great that we have um, that group. As we know that uh, we projected going into 2023 that property taxes are about 40 percent. Um, 36%, sorry, 40% is sales tax. So about three quarters of our revenue is both property and sales. Um, we're work, working more on cost recovery in 2023. Uh, that's something that's gonna be uh, real important for us to, to manage across our events. That means trying to recover our cost across, across public works and policing um, and reevaluating our relationships with our partners as well in terms of the in-kind trades that we have. Um, We passed a balanced budget for 2023 and 2024. Together with the capital improvements plan and the transportation improvements plan. Big accomplishment. Um, part of that was our passport office that brought in 553,000 and served over 15,000 customers uh, last year. And that was it went with the, with the doors closed too um, and the masking requirements and everything. So it was a little slower we weren't as efficient as we, as we could be, so uh, but we picked it up towards the quarter, towards the end of the year, and the beginning of this year as well. So uh, this year's revenue probably will be a little higher. I'm predicting um, economic development. We introduced reintroduced the DRCC planning process. Um, in a few weeks, we'll be um, hopefully uh, executing a contract with for BDA, which is our uh, planning consultant for the DRCC project. And um, uh, that will consist more of uh, concept and uh, planning. And the next step will be engineering and construction planning after that. So um, we'll go through that first uh, phase uh, fairly soon here. And we engaged the Mill Creek Chamber of Commerce and Economic Alliance of Snohomish County. Um, one of the council priorities of 2022 was to um, develop a strategic uh, economic development plan. So we are actually working with the chamber and the economic alliance to determine or to evaluate, uh, to develop some type of uh, objectives, and then so we know how we want to move forward uh, into the next into this biennium. So that's one of our major objectives. Yeah, twenty twenty two was a was a good year, but it didn't come without its its failures as well as I mentioned. And one of the things that we will continue to do is assess kind of how we did um, in that year and kind of the things that we need to work on for this year. And, and so we have, um, I have a list of things that, um, that uh, will provide us with more lead time on projects. Um, we'll have a better planning process moving forward. Um, we'll keep council more transparent on kind of things and our progress of how we're uh, addressing certain things moving forward as well. And we'll incorporate um, the legislative um, priorities, um, the uh, our work plan and kind of the project priorities that the city has as well. And my goal is to really um, provide more of a reporting process in, in this year. Um, the city manager, uh, deputy city manager and myself will provide uh, monthly or quarterly updates on kind of where we are on status uh, SAS updates. So um, we're looking forward to this year. It's going to be a good year. Um, and with that, I'll take any questions or any comments. Thank you, Martin. Anyone? I have a comment and a question. <clears throat> and I turned my mic on at the right time, too. Just want to be noted for that. Uh, great job at um, reporting back to us and uh, letting us know um, all that was accomplished here at the city. I think it's a very impressive report that you put together. Sometimes I don't, I can't remember the last time I saw something like this. So thank you for doing that. It's just a great feeling that our city is moving forward. We're getting back on track and, and you can see it with facts, not just hopes and prayers, but it's really a good job in my, my, my recognition to you and to the, to the staff. So great job on that. I, um, I did have one question and I don't know if this is the right time or not. So I'll just kind of throw it out. You can tell me it's not the right time, but 
Um, the staffing has been a huge issue and you've made such great strides. Do we still have any plans in 2023 for hiring um, an HR director or a director of marketing and communications? Is that even in the radar for this year? It is. Uh, currently, the HR position is filled by an acting, correct? right? Naomi Faye. Uh, that still leaves a, um, her wearing two hats, the clerk and the HR uh, position. So the plan is to eventually open that up. Okay. Or, yeah, to figure out kind of how we're going to fill that position. Um, so that is in the plans fairly soon here. And is the director of marketing communications even in the plans or radar for this year or not? No, not yet. I don't know. No. no. Okay. That's good. Thanks. If we didn't approve it as part of the budget, I don't believe. Anything else, John? Not for me, no. Yes, Member Cavalier. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, no questions. Just a quick comment. Um, take a bow, Martin. Take a bow, all of you. We, uh, we've really done a lot with a little in a very short amount of time, and there's not a lot of people that can say that. Um, we've built something. We've built a dream here. We've built a vision, and you all have executed it to a T, and you've created that culture shift that people only talk about. It's difficult sometimes watching the sausage being made, but it's beautiful in the same right. So good job, everyone. Good job, Martin. You did a great job of just breaking everything down of the successes in a very short amount of time. And, and uh, unfortunately you've set the bench really high for next year. So uh, kudos to you. Thanks. Yeah, you know, that's one reason why I tell I, I don't like credit. I mean, keep keeps you in line, I think. Um, one thing I did want to mention, too, is um, I want you to keep in mind that uh, this team here was here before I got here. Most all of them. Marcom, I think uh, one part of our leadership team was probably one of the first ones hired, and that's probably when our success started. It's back in 2019 and you don't even know it. Um, but everyone's hired before me, except for probably uh, Keegan, our new uh, public works maintenance operations manager. But all I did was bring them together. But they were all hired here. We just, yeah. So, um, so kudos to our prior city manager as well for bringing the team in. But these employees were um, uh, the ones that uh, we, we did all the work together. So. Um, that's one thing I think it's important to recognize as well that, uh, yeah, it's, uh, a lot of us were already here. So, um, it worked, but we have a lot of work to do. Um, so it's not a time to be complacent, more or less just, um, bring it to the next level. So we're looking forward to that. Um, and, uh, so yeah, here's the 2023 and the 40th anniversary. So. We can make things happen this year. Councilor, I'm sorry, Councilor Vatic. I don't want to step on that. That sounded like a good send off, but I did want to ask you one question, which is um, around the the relationships that you were establishing or reestablishing yeah. the community. Do you feel like there's any that are missing or any areas that you feel like you want to really get into that haven't been penetrated yet? Yeah, I think that uh, we'll, we'll work with the, um, the business side. I think it's important to kind of connect with our businesses. I don't, through the chamber possibly, leverage their expertise. Um, we have a lot of HOAs across the city of Mill Creek. We're 40% um, um, non-single housing. So um, I think that's an important piece of it as well. Um, so yeah, there are probably a, a handful of agencies that I'm thinking about that might we be able to work with um, to move forward. and. Um, um, the vintage is another one I'll add. Uh, I talked with Jennifer Vangerpan over at uh, the vintage and that part of uh, our community is real important to connect with as well. Um, given all the new businesses that are, are there and then we have a whole um, um, population there as well that, that increased the city. Uh, so um, we'll have new businesses on that bottom floor as well, 35 coming in. Um, hopefully they already have a lot of interest and so um uh that's important i think the vintage and, and the hoas that are across the mill creek um 
the businesses are huge. Uh, we probably have over 3,000 businesses in the city of Mill Creek, at least business licenses that were hmm. filed. So um, just recognizing that, I think, is, is, a, is important data to kind of maybe dig a little deeper with. Um, uh, but those are the three main yeah. things I'm picking up now. And we're always willing to take more advice on other areas that might be beneficial for us. Well, if we can be a force multiplier and you getting out into the community, please obviously let us know. And good job. Congratulations to you and the city. Yeah. And then there's another side of it as well as working with our local uh, municipalities as well. It's another thing I think I'm going to start working on is, is, is trying to reaching out to our colleagues across different cities. Um, I know we focus on just Mill Creek, but at the same time, uh, what happens on our borders um, is is pretty important as well. Um, we all uh, we benefit in a lot of ways, um, but we also suffer the same too. Um, you know, homelessness is a good example. Um, and so, uh, yeah. Thanks. Other questions, comments? No, Melissa, anything? You good? Okay. Let's move on and talk legislative agenda. Do you want to tee this off? Kick this off or do you want me to? Sure, yeah. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, we have um, established our 2023-2024 um, legislative uh, agenda, which includes a handful of priorities in your packet. Um, we had our first meeting today with the legislative committee and our deputy city manager and uh, discussed a number of things that we thought might be a good idea to cover today. Um, and I'll try to go over these in order. Um, as we know, we don't have a process in place. Um, I think next year we'll have something uh, more formal that will help us um, uh, pre-plan, uh, track, monitor, uh, report on um, priorities as they change throughout the entire process. Um, of course, it won't happen next year, but we'll, we'll, we'll start to put priorities together every year so that we, we have something that we can work on moving forward. Um, so we thought today might be a good idea to have a discussion on how we bring um, um, maybe a hybrid version or how we address this this year since we're already into the session. Uh, some of the thoughts that came up were first discussing what's on the current agenda um, to get your thoughts on any questions you may have on that. Um, discussing responsibilities, what the committee's responsibilities are in terms of um, how we report, how we um, keep count the rest of the council members and the staff updated on um, these agendas that they change because things are evolving every single day. Um, what staff responsibilities are to support the legislative committee. Um, how we report to council every two weeks or maybe every one week and kind of the change that occurred um, through that session because things are constantly changing. Um, so those are the things that, kind of were, that we were kind of discussing on that we can we can cover today. Um, and then there's some key components. They're not even going in, in the weeds maybe about some of these actually agendas and, and the impact these have. Um, there may be some priorities that you might want to add, some priorities that you might think it might be important for us to address moving forward. Um, 1425 annexation. Um, um, House Bill 1220 and, and 1110. So just some examples of, of ones that we may want to add on um, the current list. Um, so just kind of all the above, but what we really need to do is get us up to speed um, the staff and the legislative committee um, on kind of where we are on once we solidif um, you know, solidify this list and making sure that we have, so we know what to bring everyone up to speed on. And then we'll probably go in and just dive deep into the, into the, into the process to figure out kind of at um, uh, one point in time, just to get everybody up to speed so that we can start moving forward. And then as we, move through the months through April, we'll, we'll have a reporting process down, um, whether it's a mayor pro tem um, or some of the council, other council members that uh, might want to report to the rest of us uh, with staff support. So 
I know I'm kind of randomly talking about different things, but that's kind of the idea is just to just to get right up to speed. Yeah, I think part of the discussion we need to have is when we set an agenda, we kind of identify the topics, but bills are dropped and things move very fast in Olympia. We're not going to have the luxury of always coming back to the council to say, what do you think about this? And so the hope is that when we put together an agenda, a legislative agenda, that that kind of sets the framework to give direction to the mayor, mayor pro tem, city manager and deputy city manager on when and where we can comment and submit input or whether it's just signing in pro or con or submitting written comments or maybe even having someone testify on behalf of the city. So that's part of the discussion for today. Connie? Oh, I'm sorry, it's Mayor Pro, wrong light, Mayor Pro Tem, sorry. Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, today, one thing that we discussed when we got together today as a committee was that um, when we had had our meeting, we had discussed adding some component regarding housing. And we had decided um, as a council, if you remember, that we did not want to, because we didn't know what bill numbers were, um, for new bills and, and it's so fluid. We decided that it would be better if we had put something in there um, such as defend against preemption of local land use authority. And that's not on the final document. So we need to just discuss real quickly tonight that everyone did still want us to put um, something to that nature on there. I went back and I found my original wording and that's how I'd had it worded was defend against preemption of local land use authority. Um, and that pretty much covers any of these bills that they come up with where they're trying to tell us what zoning to do or anything like that um, in a broad umbrella. So um, just need to get approval from everybody. I think um, that we do indeed want to make sure that we have that on our official document tonight. Any objection to having that broad objective on the agenda? One update in that regard, diving into the weeds of the bill, House Bill 1110, which you probably heard a lot about, the missing middle bill, through the sausage making process. It, it was advanced out of committee in the House Local Government Committee, but it was amended. This was a compromise, I think, that was reached with the Association of Washington Cities. It currently, uh, in its current form, only applies to cities with population greater than 25,000. So it would not apply to the city of Mill Creek. Um, it wouldn't stop us if we wanted to implement some of those things that are covered in the bill, but it wouldn't be mandated if it passed in its current form, or it wouldn't apply to us if it's passed in its current form. Other questions, comments, thoughts on anything legislative-wise, John? Yeah, I had a um, couple, couple things. Um, I agree with what Martin was saying. Um, communication is really critical for this committee on an ongoing basis, a regular basis, uh, especially so that all of us up here on the dais understand what is our position. Because I think that uh, <clears throat> a number of the, the, the individuals up here, myself included, but other, other ones too, have a regular communication with a number of our representatives on, a, on an ongoing basis. So it's important that when I'm sitting down with Jared or, or John or April or somebody that I have a clear understanding of what the city legislative committee is saying and that I'm you know supportive of that. And so make sure that we speak in unison. Um, so that communication, yeah, I think that should be very, very regular. Like every meeting there should be on the agenda. Do we have an update from the legislative committee that's anything different, anything new to make sure that we're, we're all marching to the same beat? The, the other one, I may be a little, now I also thought that I understand the that we want to be aware of what's happening with the legislative agenda. Are we uh, also including in this legislative committee um, to make sure that they understand the Mill Creek agenda, what we want from them, or is that something different from another committee? I was I was curious about that. Like, what do we want from uh, County Council, State Legislature, that type of thing? Um, this our agenda. This discussion was focused on the state for now. That's where it started. So the state, the, 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 this is our state legislative agenda. We can talk another time about a local. So do we have an agenda for the state legislators of, from Mill Creek of what we want from April and John and you know what, what we need their support in and what we need from them? That's what this agenda is supposed to cover. Okay. So my question isn't, isn't quite clear. I understand 
that we want to be aware of what's happening from the state legislators legislative agenda and make sure we're all speaking in unison from that I understand that what I didn't hear was are we also going to be presenting to them what Mill Creek wants from our state legislators what we need from them and I'm seeing a couple of committee members behind you going yes we are I'll let the mayor pro tem tackle this one um thank you mayor yeah what we what wasn't put in the um introduction because we well we have already mentioned it at the time to council is that the steps that we have taken so far is that we um once we originally finalized this at our meeting we did have a meeting with city manager um Deputy City Manager, the Mayor, myself, with um, Senator Lovick and Representative Berg's office, and told them what our legislative agenda was, as well as all the things going on in our city, and the things that we're working with, things that we're dealing with, um, things that um, we could use help with, such as the fact that we need a roof, um, roof and HVAC over at City Hall North. Um, and just kind of told them everything that's going on, what all we're dealing with, just they're in the loop and they know what we're dealing with. Um, and then we actually just had a second meeting with Rep Berg herself, um, specifically to go over funding op opportunities, um, what we should be seeking grants for the, from that initial discussion okay. that we just had. So, um, that's where we are right now. So we are having discussions with them and letting them know everything that's going on so they know, um, as well as what our legislative priorities are. Perfect. So as long as we're communicated with that on a regular basis, along with the other ones, we can support that as well in our communications with Berg and Lubbock. And, and I know we're just talking, not county yet, just state, but I'm sure that we're doing something from the county side. I assume we are. Or is that outside of this committee? That's outside. This this legislative committee was set okay. to, for the state legislative agenda. We can have a discussion. We should probably think about something we want to do with the county. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, Councilmember Duque. Yes, I was. Um, I, I just wanted to flag because I, I I really appreciated Councilmember Seckler's um uh, point. So the agenda of the the PDF document. Uh, we have, besides what um, Mayor Pro Tem Stephanie Vignal uh, said about the addition of the that um, that that particular language for it, I just wanted to flag that when we talked about it in our um, meeting, what we're hoping is that this is a tool that you can use when talking exactly like figuring out using this language of when you have those conversations, Councilmember Seckler, um, thinking through that messaging and what we're saying is a priority and, and being able to have, um, I found this document very uh, helpful in, in being able to think through um, how we craft our language and what we are discussing about what our priorities are and even the hierarchy of them. City manager, did you have a comment? I thought you were, did you, were you wanting to chime in? No, I was just going to let you know that Council Member Duque had her. Oh, thank you. Okay. your handy. And John, the communication is two way. I mean, um, April and John have already been actively reaching out to us. So that's what prompted the meeting we had with them last week. And staff is now working on two capital budget requests, one for City Hall North and one for the DRCC. Um, so they're actively looking out for us down there and they know our the agenda we have so far and they're actively watching out for things and alerting us where we to things that are coming up. Any other thoughts, comments, any other direction you need, Mayor Brotem? I don't think so, but Martin, did you need anything else? from the council as a whole for direction? I don't think so. I, I think we can probably, um, if we meet maybe on a weekly basis, that might help starting out and then we can maybe spread it out to two, uh, the legislative committee I'm, I'm referring to, and then we could uh, maybe define kind of the operating procedure moving forward. I think the most important thing is to, if we agree upon what we've discussed, then we can start to bring everyone up to speed with kind of where we are in terms of all these um, priorities. Uh, there's not too many we can divide and conquer, I think, and maybe um, 
staff could probably do some research kind of, and then I mean, we're getting emails from the mayor um, and other council members too on updates. So we could, we can pull this together in a way that might um, help the committee, I'm thinking. Um, yeah, I think that that's, that's really what we need to do is bring everybody up to speed. And then um, as some of the other council members Stackler mentioned, we can maybe set up a schedule um, a reporting schedule. It could be weekly or it could be by. Um, we have three council meetings a month, so we can keep it weekly. If there's nothing to report, then then we don't have to report anything. Uh, but uh, given that things move so fast, it might not be a bad idea to just do it weekly. Um, yeah, things will get narrowed down after Friday. Friday is the deadline for bills to get passed out of their policy, policy committee in the House of Origin. So if bills don't get passed out, that doesn't mean they're entirely dead, but it's much harder for them to be revived during the session. So th things will be more narrowly focused. Uh, Councilmember Cavalieri. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Just wanted to say thanks to my colleagues who uh, took on this task to... Um, to actively pursue the city's legislative agenda. We, these are the lists we have here is everything I believe we discussed as priorities for our city or, or at least our request from the state and what's what we deem the most urgent at this time during this session. So you have my full support. I think you've done a good job here um, putting everything down um, for all of us and, and including the public to see. So thanks. Councilmember Paddock. So I guess uh, to to jump off that a little bit. So are we looking for? Are you looking for any sort of comment or input on the priorities that have been listed here and kind of the details therein, or is this more of just kind of an FYI? It's more to discuss the process to have an understanding that as we go forward, that's going to kind of frame the direction that the leadership team and the two of us have for when we submit comments and when we need to feel we need to come back to the council, but also for reporting on stuff that's going on in Olympia. Okay. So, I mean, for instance, I've already mentioned House Bill 1110, um, another bill that Representative Berg brought to our attention that we may have some interest in is 1425, which is, as I understand it, I haven't dove into it, is reconstituting uh, the incentives cities had some 15 years ago to annex. So it depends on the size of the annexation, but it, it allows cities to recoup some of the sales, state portion of the sales tax. So. That might be something that we may want to, it's, it's, it doesn't require us to do it, but it's a tool that we may have. Another bill that I'm not sure that we care about is Senate Bill 5618, which is a bill that would increase local jurisdictions authority to increase the 1% cap on property taxes. With our recent fire annexation decision, I'm not sure that matters to us anymore because now we have probably more bank capacity than we'll ever use in the foreseeable future. So I'm not sure that we have as much vested interest in that bill, but, um, and we haven't even talked about which we don't plan to tonight, the public safety bills that are, after Friday, we'll have a better idea of what's gonna be moving forward and seriously considered. So that's a long way of saying tonight was more to get a, have a discussion on the process. Thank you. One, one, one comment suggestion that I, I know that you may have, maybe you're alluding to the fact that you may have some comments or suggestions and, um, we, Mayor Pro Tem is the lead for the committee. Um, maybe I could suggest that comments or suggestions amongst the call, uh, council members could be sent to council, uh, Mayor Pro Tem. And in our weekly meetings, you can inform us on kind of what the uh, questions, concerns, and we can provide resources. Or she could, yeah, we'll figure that piece out. So I just thought I'd, I'd uh, connect that point. And then, and then those comments. No, go ahead. And then those comments or questions could be circulated amongst the council, so we can kind of see what's what's coming your way, and we see if we want to jump on that. And we we haven't done this this formally before, or at least in my years on the council. So I think this is a learning experience. And after the session is over, we should probably have a short study session to see what worked well, what didn't work well, and plan our next steps for next session. Councilmember Cavalier. Thanks, Mayor. And, and I was going to say exactly that. I think this is a, a a great vessel to do what we've always been talking about in lieu of us 
getting on the phone or getting on emails trying to individually politic our legislators or representatives. So this is a, the formalized process. I think it's just the beginning, but um, but I mean, we have a chance to build it into what we want it to be. So yeah, input is great from everybody and, and council discussion. And, and you're always, of course, welcome to make motions and have the dialogue at your leisure for the most part. So I like this. Good job, everyone. Um, and I just want to make clear that we do update the document to have that housing language on there. And I did email it over this afternoon. So. Okay. Anything else on this? Okay. Well, uh, turn it over to Martin or directly to Jody. Hand it over to Jody. Thanks. I'll be right there. We're good. Came back on. Came to life. There we go. Well, I'm excited to be here today to tell you about our uh, accomplishment of having all of our 2023 events lined up. So for the year, which uh, is a big deal, as city manager mentioned earlier uh, in our accomplishments was making it through all those events last year. <laughs> and so we kind of felt like we were chasing our tail a lot and um, we learned a ton and uh, came out this year knowing that we wanted to have everything lined up uh, to give us the best chance of success um, and to uh, allow the community time to plan for the events that they want to participate in and sponsors who want to participate in certain events. So we're excited to be here and be able to present this. Scott would be here tonight, but he uh, just survived his uh, helicopter skiing event over the weekend. And <laughs> I got a text earlier today from him that he uh, survived and I was just elated. So I was holding my breath the whole time. <laughs> He got dropped onto a top of a mountain in Canada to ski, so I'm glad he is safe. All right, we're going to start start this off with um, our first event of the year, which we're excited about, the Mill Creek Open House for our Meet the Chief event. And it's really meet the chief and meet all of our new police officers that can be there. Not all can be there at the same time, so we won't have everybody there, but um, Chief White wants to make sure that this is an opportunity for the community to come together to see the police department, explore the vehicles that are going to be out front, tour the police station. We're going to have some refreshments by one of our new sponsors, Nothing But Cake, but Cakes, and uh, Starbucks from Mill Creek Town Center as well. So we're excited. We um, hope that you can make it and please bring your families. And uh, I'm not used to using this one. There we go. Um, our second uh, event is Coffee with a Cop. So this is two has two dates, um, Thursday, March 9th at Starbucks near Safeway, and then um, at Visible Coffee on Friday, October 6th. And um, our Chief White is also excited about this. And as you can see, we have our wonderful uh, Barb Heidel in a couple of these pictures volunteering as, <laughs> uh, and that's a, a fun event for everybody. So we're excited about that one. And we hope you can come out and see us. And then, how do I get, sorry, I wanna see if I can move that. Um, our city chat tour. So this started last year when we came up with the idea that if we couldn't get people to come to us to uh, engage about the city, that we would come to them, or we would bring um, mayor and mayor pro tem and our city leadership to the people. And so uh, our first, we decided that the best thing we could do is line all those uh, out so that, uh, again, best opportunity to um, connect with the community and let them know where we'll be when. So um, all of our, uh, one thing I wanted to say also, all of our events were scheduling uh, as Facebook events. So 
beginning of the year. So we already have most of our events scheduled as Facebook events. And then we also have all of the events on our city calendar on the uh, homepage. So anytime you go to the calendar, you can find all of our events there. Uh, that is a new change from last year. And that sounds pretty um, like that should have happened sooner, but we had several calendars happen or going on before we arrived here. So we're happy to have all of those in one place. Anyhow, these are the dates for our city chat. So we're going to be at the Mill Creek Community Association boardroom uh, in March. In May, we'll be at Jackson High School in their library. We're excited about that one because then we can get some student engagement too, hopefully student and parents. Uh, Mill Creek Library and then back to Cozier of Mill Creek. They were excited to have us last year and they're excited to have us back again this year. Uh, we, we had a really good group last year. Sorry, I'm having some problems with this. Um, next event, we're really excited about this one, the extravaganza. Uh, it's at Heatherwood Middle School again. Uh, so same location and um, we have our YABs already set up to start filling the 18,000 eggs that they'll be filling over the next uh, month or so at four different events. So please plan to come out to that one. This was one that was um, brought up last year. I believe it was Mayor Pro Tem that uh, reminded us that Earth Day was something that was important to this uh, council. And so we made that a priority to bring that back uh, and do some planning to get the community involved. So how we've done that is that we are doing the North Creek Trail cleanup. We're gonna do it from nine to noon. The, the Our uh, youth advisory board will definitely be there, but we're also inviting the community to register and to come out. We'll provide them with the, the equipment that they need to go out on the trail safely. So things to pick up trash, people will work in teams so that nobody's picking any Anything up by hand, even if they have gloves on. And then we'll leave uh, the, the larger objects and things along the trail that our public works department will come through and clean up afterwards. We are already listed on the earthday.org uh, website for the event. So hopefully we'll start getting registration soon. Please do um, either use the QR code or the link to go sign up if you're interested um, in participating. And we'll uh, get an email out to everybody who does afterwards or just before the event. Uh, we'll have our Memorial Day commemorative ceremony at Library uh, at Library Park Veterans Monument again, and that is always well attended and a beautiful ceremony. Pianos on Main will return, Mill Creek Town Center. Uh, we had such success with our uh, last year with this, um, as uh, Council Member Steckler mentioned, Kiwanis of Mill Creek uh, uh, painted a new piano for us last year. So we had three out on the streets of Main Street. We had great coverage by um, the, new, the news and press. So we were excited about that. So we'll be bringing that back. And we're hoping to have some sponsors specifically for this one this year. So that's one of our goals. Party in the Parks. Uh, last year we did three events. This was a learning opportunity for us. Uh, that was too many. So we we um, are doing two, but what we're doing is we're doing one at the beginning of the summer, then we're going to have National Night Out, and then an end of the summer bash. So we will still be doing three Party in the Park types events. It's just we'll be working with the police department on theirs um, instead of, because last year basically we ended up doing four. That's what it felt like instead of three. So that's our goal. We are also bringing back um, Board Bash. That was a huge hit last year. And then um, we're at the final party in the parks in August. We are going to be launching our 40th anniversary celebration. So we'll have some special things happening there to get everybody excited about the about what's coming for that. Jody, didn't last year, didn't party in the parks and national night out uh happened on the same day and it made it kind of a logistical nightmare. I believe that happened the last no. one. No, it's just I'm that mistaken. it was more or less like a party in the parks. So oh. we ended up, um, yeah, it, it, it just made more sense to do it this way, but so, and then national night out. So we're excited to have national night out at Buffalo park this year and work closely with, um, 
Barb and um, the Citizens Patrol and the PD on this event. It's so exciting because this one is one where it's completely free for the community. Um, at Party in the Parks, we usually have, we have been having food trucks, but those are pay. This is one where the community gets to come out and really enjoy um, no matter what their circumstance. So this is an exciting one and we're happy to support it. Trunk or Treats on Main. So this is uh, a collaboration between the city and uh, Mill Creek Town Center. So last year we heard that people really wanted Treats on Main to come back and they really wanted the trunk or treat that the city used to do. And so we decided rather than have those in two separate locations, we would have trunk or treats on Main. So we, our plan is to close down a section of, of uh, Mill Creek Town Center uh, from 153rd to just uh, before City Hall. And we will uh, have trunks decorated along there. So people will be in all of the spots as it, just like a trunk or treat. Um, but, and so our hope is, and from what we've heard, Treats on Main was a real difficulty for the community, for uh, the merchants in the community. It was very expensive for them to have staff who were paid to be on to pass out candy. And then they also had to supply the candy. So we're gonna pool all of our resources and have it on Main Street. So they still get to participate if they can or if they want to, um, but we'll take, you know, kind of take the heavy lift off of their shoulders. And the community will have a safe place in their town center to come back to. So we're excited about this one and uh, excited to work with Mill Creek Town Center Association to put that on. And then we have our Veterans Day ceremony, as we have done in the past. Um, again, very well attended and a beautiful ceremony um, prior to our parade. And then our Veterans Day parade again. And we will be working with the same uh, community group um, volunteers that we worked with the last year have all volunteered to come back. So we already have our schedule planned and know what we need to do moving forward for the parade. And we're excited about that. And then Festival of Trees, this last year was our first Festival of Trees. Uh, it was, um, by all accounts, a successful event, a successful first event. Uh, we've had, uh, as I've mentioned before, we had about 25 storefronts that were decorated throughout the city that are still decorated. Uh, we have Kiwanis actually, that's gonna be um, going out to these uh, merchants and asking if they want help removing them. They had a deadline to remove them before the end of February. So that's why the, most of them are still up. Um, and um, so working with Kiwanis and other volunteers to allow them to go in and help take those down. Um, and they so you should be starting to see those come down soon. Um, but we're hoping to bring this back. Uh, it was uh, most people, most of the comments have been that, that they were happy to see something like this uh, happen and that it brought town, the town center together. Um, and we hope that we can expand it. So more to come on that. And then uh, another collaboration this year is that in the past we've had the Santa Parade and we've had tree, tree lighting, but the city has not completely or has not um, gotten involved in the Santa Parade as much. And we decided that this year we would work uh, alongside of Mill Creek Town Center and try to make this more of a cohesive event for, um, for the city. So that's our goal this year is to, um, is to kind of uh, work together with Mill Creek Town Center um, to put that on. And then, as you know, we support and just like uh, city manager said, we support and um, participate in many events throughout the year. So we put together uh, a sheet that you have you should have received if not you if you have not received the PDF version of this, we can get that to you. Um, and it lists all of the events, it will list who's involved what time what location what resources are being used by the city. So if we need public works for a certain thing or the police department, it lists all of that. So we have all of that listed. And then um, there are some events that we participate in or support um, that involve our resources and others that we uh, just wanna list because we want the city to, or we want the community to know all the different events. All of these events will be listed on our website if they're not already. So not just ours. And then finally, we did um, as we had hoped, which was get our sponsorship uh, information uh, and flyer ready to be 
sent out this year. So we have already sent out our sponsorships and we plan on going out into the community and actually meeting a lot of um, a lot of the merchants and organizations and businesses that we didn't have contact information for. We're actually going to go and um, spend some time and go meet them and gather that information so that we can send it out earlier next year. That's our plan, but we did just get our first gold sponsor today. So we're very excited. <laughs> And that's about it. Any questions? Thanks, Judy. Any question? Go ahead. <clears throat> Pardon me. It's great to see it all in one place. So thank you so much for pulling it all together. Getting rid of the extra calendars makes it a lot easier to just go <laughs> to one place. So I appreciate that. And um, yeah, probably a good call to reduce the party in the parks by one so that you don't feel so frazzled. Um, but you did a great job last year. So look forward to all the events this year as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Councilmember Duque. Thank you. Um, Jerry, it, it's, uh, um, I, I don't know if I'm behind you or if you can see me in front of you, but <laughs> um, thank you for this. I want to say, I, you know, same thing as Councilmember. Allison about it's just great seeing this and putting it together. It's it's massive and I, I really appreciate it. And I just loved hearing about you saying about actionable items about meeting our business uh, businesses and going out there. Um, I think that's fantastic. And what you're doing, you know, looking for sponsorships and looking for those opportunities to connect. I think it's it's some it's more than just about what resources are given. It's also giving um, businesses and individuals the um, the feeling. And, and the opportunity to feel involved and be involved in um, community events. So it's not just about, you know, getting someone to sponsor so, you know, there's money involved, but it's more about that there's ownership um, in our, in our um, connectivity as a, as a community. I think that makes a lot of sense and I really appreciate it. I do have a few questions. Um, I, uh, let's see. So, oh, for the trunk or treat, um, I was curious about the timing that was chosen. I know that's uh, the traditional time for the um, the trunk or treat aspect. And so I was curious about the whether or not um, the other businesses decide on Main Street to give out candy or however that's looking. And I, as you firm it up, um, I found that this is a very successful, that part was very successful because it was actually during daylight hours for smaller children. Okay. Um, and so then that's something just to, to keep in mind, whether it's kind of a shift. I know everyone has their own traditions and how they work, but um, it's much harder for little kids to go house to house. Um, but so this is kind of, I felt that it was just, it, I think it started at four, the, the treats on Main Street. And so that's what you would see. You would see all the toddlers and the little kids, the ones whose parents would probably go to like three houses in their neighborhood, if that. Um, so there's something about um, hitting that demographic for finding more opportunities for more of the little ones. Um, it's also nice because when it's daylight, um, and hopefully, you know, knocking on wood, it doesn't rain, it, there's an opportunity for you to see, it's nice to see each other's costumes, and it was just kind of, you know, you took photos with each other, even if you didn't know each other, because you saw like a fun dinosaur costume, or you were matching outfits, that kind of a thing. So um, just a consideration for as you move forward, thinking about the times. Um, when it comes to that for the different groups. I noticed there's quite a few events at the town center, which is fantastic. They're a great partner, um, but thinking through if there's opportunities for anything, the the either the tree decorating or what, whatever there might be for connections for other areas um, throughout our city, including um, the farm and, um, or just looking for what are the opportunities that can be hosted in those areas. I think Party in the Parks is one of those perfect examples. It's nice to have different locations. Um, to hit the different neighborhoods. And so I think that makes sense, but just had to flag that there as um, something. I noticed that you said um, the launching of the 40th anniversary uh, items or, so I'm assuming that's uh, in terms of the last party in the parks. So I was surprised when I saw this slide, I didn't see something dedicated to 40th anniversary ideas. I'm assuming that's because it's still in, um, in your brainstorming and still um, in that process. Is that the case? Because I only saw that one line in that um in that slide that is true we have a few different things um happening uh for our ideas forming for the 40th anniversary and um we had some specific things that we thought we could launch there um that could be successful uh one of the things that we talked about um well actually i, I won't get into speculation yeah no I, so, yeah yeah no need but, to <laughs> i just wanted to confirm that's why it's not a 
there's That's not great. a dedicated slide to that. Um, I, you know, because I was, I was yeah, I was curious because, you know, some places like Walt Disney World, I'm not comparing us to Walt Disney World, but like places like that, usually when they have their anniversary, they'll keep it going for a full year, you know, um, from the, so then I, I was like, oh, maybe that's part of it, that there'll be, there'll be elements in your thing. I was just, that was my one thing looking at the agenda before the meeting. I was like, oh, there's only a, a line item for there. And then um, in terms of promotions for these events and getting this communication, I really appreciate you using, of course, your skills at social media and and and, and word of mouth and talking to businesses. And that's great. I'm, I'm hoping that continues with um, organizations or using um, our elementary schools or our schools, you know, their their flyers, their announcements, their, you know, uh, places for that. I know this is something we had talked to. Um, I think it was with Scott a few years ago, and I think you guys have with peach jar, that's the, the system that um, the elementary schools use. I think sometimes we forget, for example, elementary wise, there's there's quite a few elementary schools that residents from Mill Creek attend. It's not just Mill Creek Elementary. Um, and so I think it's important for all these types of events um, to, to make sure we're reaching out to schools that um, are not, our schools are not necessarily in our boundaries, but students attend, for example, we do have students in Mill Creek who go to high school at, um, of course, Archbishop, but then there's also to Cascade um, based off of zoning and, and redistricting. So thinking about um, how do we still connect with residents in Mill Creek that don't go to schools that are in Mill Creek boundary. And that's it, this was fantastic. Those are my notes. Those are excellent notes. I really appreciate that and good points on the schools outside of the area. So we will definitely note that and work on that. Appreciate it. You guys were better? Is a uh, run with heart still a thing? At, at this time, no. We we um, have heard that it's possible that uh, the run of the mill might be back, but we have not, we don't have that confirmed <clears throat> yet. And run with heart, again, they it's a, um, a sponsor situation. Mm. So we don't have, there's not anybody that has stepped up to that. Um, and we don't have the power, the people power. Got to it. put those on for sure. So uh, we're open to talking with folks and helping them promote it if that is something that happens. Or like a rematch with the city manager on that <laughs> run. So thank you. <laughs> that was a great event. And honestly, uh, those runs are very popular and uh, we would love to see something like that, but not in our control at this point. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to thank you, Jody, for your presentation. And thank you for putting everything together up front so that we have it all laid out right now, because it's really helpful to be able to find it and to be able to go ahead and put it all in your calendar and know when things are going to be so that you can plan around it. And I'm sure it's also helpful for the community to have to have the dates and already know when things are coming so that they can plan as well and, and plan out their calendar. I think it's really extremely helpful to have have it right now for the whole year, all planned out and laid out nice and neat. And uh, I really personally uh, appreciate it. And I'm sure that lots in the community probably appreciate it too. So thank you. Thank you. That's our Kevlar. Thanks, Mayor. Just really quick. Great presentation, Jody, as usual. Thank uh, thanks for all you do. I know how hard you work. Um, Councilmember Duque had some really good uh, comments. Uh, one, one of the things I do hear in the community on occasion is that certain pockets of the city may not feel um, that, I don't like the word included because it's overused in my opinion, but may not feel that they are included in, in all the festivities. So I thought that her comments really did kind of hit home a little bit because I think the farm is a great opportunity for us to market the farm in the city and, and somehow bring those entities together in, in, in a more bolder way. So uh, that and also, you know, near the Albertsons there and whatnot, however big or small, it doesn't matter. I think there's a there's something to be had there. I, I don't know what it is, but but uh, but to great comments by Councilmember Duque. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Everybody we will else? definitely take that back and look at the possibilities for other areas. And if it, even if it's not something that we can uh, do this year, we we can look at that and really be proactive about how we implement, you know, maybe just change things around a little bit for next year. Thank you, Thank Jody. You. Uh, Deputy City Manager, are you taking the next one?
Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. I'm excited to be here with you tonight, um, addressing you for the first time. Um, joining with me tonight is Nathan um, Phillips, the Chief Executive Officer of North Shore Senior Center, and also Celeste Virago, the Program Coordinator of Mill Creek Senior Center. I have just a few slides tonight, um, running through the background, highlighting the contract terms, and then I'll pass it on to um, Nathan for a quick word, and then coming back for the Council action. Since early 2000, the city of Mill Creek has been in partnership with North Shore Senior Center, a nonprofit organization providing um, to provide community services to our older and or disabled adults in the community. The city's support were in monetary contributions and free use of facility at City Hall North. In September of 2011, the city entered into a formal agreement with North Shore to um, document the public purpose and to ensure public funds are used appropriately according to the city's intent um, of providing um, the important educational, cultural, health-oriented, and recreational services to the city's older adults. Um, in 2018, the city of Mill Creek um, Senior Center opened at the farm. Accordingly, the 2019 contract only provided monetary contributions to North Shore. Based on the latest census data, the city's older adults um, age 65 and over make up about 15.6% of our population. And that's about, um, about a little over 3,300 based off of the 2022 estimated population for the city. For the contract terms, um, this contract is for a 12 month period um, ending in December 31 of 2023 with two annual written extensions. The scope of services, um, include, um, so the North Shore operates through the Mill Creek Senior Center operating Monday to Friday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And um, their services include health and wellness programs, classes, educational opportunities and support services, as well as social events to older adults and disabled adults, as well as their caregivers. More details are provided in Exhibit A of the contract. Um, in turn, the city will pay uh, uh, 12500 per year, paid quarterly, and this amount is included in the 2023-2024 adopted budget, so no additional appropriation is needed at this time. Um, and so now I'll turn it over to Nathan for um, to elaborate or give us more information at, for North Shore. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Madam uh, Mayor Pro Tem, and Council Members. Thanks for this opportunity to join you this evening. I'm delighted to be with you. It's been a while. Um, my name is Nathan Phillips. I'm the CEO of the North Shore Senior Center, which is kind of the parent organization for the Mill, Mill Creek Senior Center. And I'm joined this evening by my colleague, Celeste, uh, who's the program supervisor for Mill Creek specifically. So she's going to chime in a little bit too. Um, you know, I've been on board as the CEO for about a year now, but North Shore Senior Center has been serving this community for over for 50 years now. Um, and we serve seniors and people with disabilities and their families. And so, like, we also like to say we serve everybody because that's seniors, people with disabilities and their families. Um, and we're also serving a community that was highly impacted by the pandemic. And as an organization, we were too. And since we've reopened after the pandemic, we've been doing a lot of work both at Mill Creek and overall to figure out what we need to do to serve a changed community. And so we're doing a lot of work um, in our programming now to look at how we can kind of address some of the deferred health needs in the senior community, really look at an ongoing problem with isolation among older adults in the community. Um, and then also there's just a much higher level of economic distress among older adults in the community too. And so we're tweaking our programs. We're still a fun place where folks come and play cards and and have parties and are active together, but we're also trying to really look and make sure that we're serving the older adults in our community really well. Um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Celeste for a minute just to talk a little bit about some of the specific things we're doing in uh, Mill Creek, which I think are exciting. I'm excited to see that up and running. Mm -hmm. Hello. Um, so I've been here just, uh, just a little over a year. Um, I have to confess, I think this has been my favorite job that I've ever had. Um, so much opportunity and um, exciting things going on and just interacting with seniors, which I love to do. 
So we do have uh, yoga and Tai Chi. We have a very popular watercolor class, memoir writing, but also um, bringing in uh, Sheba advisors twice a month for um, help with Medicare, um, bringing in resource specialists to help people if they need um, EBT help or um, help with transportation or things like that, any kind of application they might need help filling out whether have questions about. So I'm just excited to keep keep growing and keep keep offering services and keep having people come in and have a good time. Thanks, Celeste. Mm -hmm. um, we couldn't do the work we do at the senior center without the support of our municipal partners and our, our county partners. We really support, we really thank you for the support we've had from the city. Um, we almost served about, as an organization, about 4,000 people last year, which is about two thirds of where we were before the pandemic. Um, we anticipate this year will be another kind of year of growth and we're excited to kind of come back in full force this year. So th with your with your help and partnership. Um, if I might just indulge your um, legislative presentation earlier too, we're also running a bill in Olympia this year um, um, with some Mill Creek volunteers. That are, uh, Representative Kloba is helping us fix a little um, problem with state law that doesn't let us do bingo in Mill Creek because we do bingo in Bothell. And so oh. we're getting state law changed so that um, so that we can do bingo in more than one county. So if you have a chance to uh, add House Bill 1707 to your legislative <laughs> agenda, <laughs> our volunteers at the Mill Creek Center Center would really appreciate it. So, and with that, we'll be happy to answer any questions you might have for us. Just, I, sorry, Mayor, I have questions, but the first question is, is what would preclude a municipality like Mill Creek from drafting its own language for bingo? Well, bingo actually is governed by state law. Oh, you don't want, I've been down this mm -hmm. rabbit hole so far. <laughs> uh, it's governed by the state gambling laws. And so um, we went all the way to the gambling commission. We've been testifying, but we finally determined a small change to state laws needed to do that. So. Wow. That's just pertaining to other organizations. Other organizations could, but no, no organization right now under law can operate bingo in more than one county. So. Thank you, Nathan. Any other questions, comments, motions? Councilmember Duque, I'm sorry, I didn't see you up there. I have one too. Thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate uh, your attendance, um, both online and in person. I'm sorry, I'm not there in person to, uh, to say hello. Um, I thank you for uh, all the services that you provide. I was curious to understand how you receive feedback from the members of the community who use your services. What is that uh, process like? Do you guys do surveys? Do you, um, after events, do you, I'm just curious about what's that feedback loop? Oh, so let's go ahead. Yeah, no, we we have had um, collected, I guess, had comment cards out. We always do. Um, there hasn't been much, I guess, spilling out of them recently, but kind of more in the beginning, I guess, when people, when it was reopened and we were starting to get up and running again, um, people were expressing their, their thoughts more. Um, I guess a little bit with me here in this office, I have a very open door policy. So people come in and talk to me all the time. <laughs> so, um, and they, they really give me feedback. So that is good. I hear it right from the horse's mouth. Um, but um, Nathan, is there more of a... I might also just add as a part of our organizational culture is we're an organization that's always been volunteer run. We have over 400 active volunteers at North Shore Senior Center. Um, getting feedback is seldom a problem for us. Um, mm -hmm. We also train, we have just kind of an organizational value. When people come to, with, come to us with ideas, part of what we do is try and get them involved in the solution. So um, someone came to my office today and wanted split pea soup more often on the lunch menu. And so we signed him up for lunch volunteer in the kitchen <laughs> staff. So um, yeah, that's one of the many ways we have lots of people in the field who kind of keep us up to speed. 
I love that. I think that's really important. Um, being able to not just get feedback from individuals, but from getting it from your volunteers. So I hope there's some kind of thing that you do since volunteers are are more consistent potentially that you know that you're getting you know what they're hearing and being able to you know look at that and and determine you know what what does it mean. I think it's just helpful for us to know what Mill Creek residents who are using mm -hmm. um, the senior center uh, what they're talking about. Uh, obviously, split pea soup may be too granular. Um, but there, there, there might be opportunities for things to share with our Marcom, our marketing and communications group about um, if there's any trends or if there's programs, especially as we talk about our recreational programs um, that the city provides and looking for those uh, connections. Um, and then we have um, a wonderful new uh, uh, position that was created for um, uh, um, Barb, who's probably sitting down there. I just can't uh, see her. Barb Heidel, who who um, work is going to be working with volunteer coordination. So if that's an opportunity for those in um, who use the senior center who want to volunteer with the city um, to thinking about those connections. So just um, I'm always curious about how we can you you have a group of people who are actively attending and going and how can we find out what they're interested in um, is always important. So thank you for all the work that you do. Thank you. Council Member Stick. Hey, Nathan, it's good to see you again. Right. Um, I, I had a couple of questions just to make sure that I'm, I'm clear. Now, there's the North Shore uh, Senior Center in Bothell, uh, which is where I think you're, you're primarily stationed out of. Right. And what we're talking about today is the funding for the Mill Creek uh, Senior Center, which you manage for us. Correct. Correct. Okay. And so the question on the funding, now you, you said that the 12500 is that the same amount that we've yes. paid in the past? Okay. Yes. So it's the same amount, no increase. That's something that should be should be noted, and I I know that over the past um, year or so, when I've sat up here, there have been some suggestions that have come forward about the our our senior center, not just the age old where's the parking and how come we're so far away from town center. I know that one, but there were other ones such as having certain um, events. Like I, I heard, I think I heard yoga. I don't know if our senior center does yoga or line dancing, or do we have a do we have a space now for that at the senior center in Mill Creek? We do, Celeste. Yep, yoga is done here. Um, at, and here is at, Bothell? At Vintage, at yeah. Vintage in Mill Creek. Mill Creek. Oh, in Mill Creek. Uh, the, oh, sorry. Am I muted? No. No, no, I'm sorry. I was, I was confused. Sorry. Okay. Go ahead. Yoga is done here um, at the Mill Creek Senior Center. Um, our Tai Chi class and and I'm hoping to start line dancing up again in, in um, April is down at the North Creek Presbyterian Church because that is a bigger, bigger space. Okay, but our seniors do get all of these um, uh, events and uh, abilities as well. Right, so yeah. members of the North Shore Senior Center, whether they be in Mill Creek or Kenmore or Bothell or Woodenville, they have access to all the programs we run across the organization. But um, Celeste is doing a great job in Mill Creek at that, that, that kind of relatively small spot, really kind of getting some innovative programming in there, especially to address what, what the community is looking for now. Okay. That answers all my questions. Thank you. Thanks. Councilmember Cavalieri. Thanks, Mayor. Um, you touched on it a little bit a second ago. <clears throat> what, what are the numbers looking like? Are, are seniors migrating back to the senior center uh, post-COVID? Are we seeing... The increases that that we're hoping for, I guess, would be the best way of saying it. You know, it's an interesting, it's a great question. We noticed um, when we reopened that there were definitely some members of the community who were kind of knocking on our doors who've been isolated for years and were ready to get back out and going. But there is still a very significant part of the community that still hasn't come back. And that's something we wor we worry a lot about, uh, isolation among older adults. We know that um, social isolation has the same deleterious health impacts as smoking a pack a day of cigarettes. Like it's really unhealthy for people to be alone too much. So that that reaching out and engagement is something we pay a lot of attention to. We know we're not back to pre-pandemic levels, so we have some work to do. Thank you. And that kind of leads into my next question as well. And I think Councilmember Steckler just kind of asked it a little bit as well. If I recall correctly, I think we've been cutting, and I'm not trying to just ask what kind of bigger check we can cut on behalf of the taxpayer. I, I think 12.5 has been like the, the same number for at least three or four budget cycles that I can remember. So are, so are we being, uh, are, are we keeping up our end of the deal as a partner? 
So this. Uh, Go ahead. Um, so the the adopted twenty three twenty four budget only includes twelve thousand each year for this um, for this cycle. There, this payment for twelve thousand five hundred has been in place since twenty eleven, in combi in combination with the uh, free use of the facility at North Creek. Um, excuse me, at uh, the City Hall North. Um, since it changed in 2018, uh, it, I don't think that we um, factored in an increase of contribution monetarily to North Shore. But right, we could certainly that. consider that either at the mid-buy, if um, City Council would um, would prefer that, or we could include it in the next budget cycle in 20. 526. I think I think it's definitely worth visiting at some point, and I would say sooner rather than later. And to Nathan's point about um, trying to get the folks to come back, and there's some that just have, will not get off on the fence. But there's there's still that, I guess, for lack of a better term, that next generation coming up that we need to make sure we're addressing. So per perhaps at some point a presentation on how we. Um, I one of the council members talked about outreach. I think it was. Uh, council member Duque about what are we doing for outreach so and if there was a plan that the city could participate in or with and and somehow you know if dollars are involved that it's, it's definitely a conversation worth having because it's been my understanding that that it is still kind of um I don't I don't like the word lagging down there as far as numbers so um I, I definitely want to see that increase uh over the long haul that sounds great we'd be happy to do that thank you mayor I'm happy to make a motion Go for it. Oh. I'll just go back to the last slide. Oh, um, I'm sorry. Thank, thank you, Nathan. Thank you, Celeste. Um, so for the council, excuse me, for the for our last slide, um, the council action that we're seeking tonight is either the council adopt a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a contract with North Shore Senior Center, or do not adopt as a resolution and provide an alternative direction to staff. That concludes my report. Staff is available for questions. On that basis, I know we have the city attorney on here. Um, what are your thoughts on how this should be worded? I prepared a draft resolution. Has it been provided to council? Well, I'm looking at two now. There's two separate ones? What's two? There should only be one. Oh, it's just worded different. It's, it's it's essentially the same online and what we're seeing up here. That's, Mayor, I'll make a motion. Authorize a city manager to execute a contract with North Shore Senior Center to provide senior programs, services to Mill Creek residents. Second. Second. Thank you, Councilmember Steck. We've got that one. Uh, any further discussion? I can't see Melissa. Melissa, did you have any further discussion? No further discussion. Thank you. Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carries unanimously. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Um, let's move on to talk about DRCC. Director Todd. Thank you, Mayor, Mayor Botem, Council. We can make this quick or we can make it long, whatever you'd like to do. Mostly I've got slides prepared if we want to go back and talk about things. But basically, in January, we did a full recap, and that material is in your packet about the whole history of where we got um, it, it, it have traversed in the past. Uh, in at that time, we said let's take a take a little detour and talk about a private um, venture who wanted to put in a pickleball facility. So you guys talked about that last week. And so here we are this week. Just looking to say if we should go ahead with the original proposal, which was to go to Bruce D's Associates, had had a proposal for us to do a master planning process that takes about 12 to 18 months, uh, about $190,000, which we have in the budget for uh, through some state capital grant money uh, with the help of Karen Reed, also uh, on contract to help us out with that. So I'm mostly prepared to answer any questions if you have any questions or desire to move it some different direction. So turn it back to you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, so I think this is the opportunity to have the discussion we didn't have after hearing the presentation last last week from the real deal. Um, so we can kind of remember, we brought them in to see if we want to proceed down two tracks or just uh, consider the real deal as part of the overall consideration of the DRCC as a whole. 
So I um, open it up for the council for discussion, thoughts. I'll, I'll throw it in there that, remember our process is to look at the needs in the community, to look at how we might program against those needs, the facilities are required, and then look at partnerships to get to those kinds of things. And so partnerships are a part of the process. Really the question was, do we wanna divert severely from that or, or, or significantly from that, such that we wanna change that process with our consultant? And I'm thinking what I'm hearing is that I think our process will still cover that opportunity to talk to partners. But we want to make sure if there was something that needed yet to be said, that was an opportunity to do so. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I think for my part, I am not comfortable trying to pull in and do a separate track with just um, the real deal. I prefer to keep it in with the overall project. Um, and I did have some concerns um, that I'd like hashed out regarding what it would look like if we were um, leasing the land to a non or to a for-profit business. That's something that we're supposed to be making for the community. So I think to leave that as a discussion in the overall project um, where we're talking to stakeholders and, and getting all information, I, I would feel more comfortable with looking at it that way than trying to pull it out and do a, a fast track for for them. That's where that's where I stand anyway. Councilmember Paddock. I guess I would just say that I didn't see anything in the uh, prior presentation, the real deal that would necessitate going down a separate path other than uh, going down what was already proposed and provided with um, with the BDA folks and would vote to go in that direction. Councilmember Cavalier. Thanks, Mary. As you know, I wasn't here last week, but I did uh, consult with you on the phone and I did have a chance to uh, review last week's meeting uh, in the airport. So um, here, here's what I've gleaned from it. I thought the presentation from The Real Deal was great. And I know we're not making that decision now. Um, the lack of proof of concept for me on The Real Deal project was something I found a bit worrisome. Uh, I'm sure if we had something up and running and something tangible for us to maybe hang on to and look at and really you know, decipher from there, it would probably make the decision a little more open for me. But uh, to the mayor pro tem's comment about uh, the community, I believe it was something about moving in the direction of the community's needs. I happen to uh, agree with those. Councilmember Allison. Yeah. <clears throat> I think that you know we don't want to put the cart before the horse, and we haven't done the full community engagement to really understand where more most of the city's hearts and minds are. So I don't want to cut it off and say it's not a possibility, but I I really don't want us to have two tracks going either. Councilmember Duque. Yes, well, I think uh, I'm in agreement with what everyone's saying, and I'm happy to go forward with the staff recommendation to to um. To, you know to move forward with the consultant proposed project yeah i think councilmember cavalier said it well i thought they, they gave a fantastic presentation it's very intriguing i just thought their st louis and columbia projects were farther along than they are so i'll be interested to see where they progress when they open later this year early next year and see how it might fit in or not fit into what we're trying to do so we've given you sufficient direction tonight Yes, thank you. So we'll be back on the 28th with a contract for you to execute Great. with Bruce Dees and Associates. Could thank I you. Uh, interrupt though for just a moment? Because I'm, I'm still, one question I had. Um, one issue was real deal, which we've established, okay. But the, the other issue issue with the consultants where I'm, I'm still a little confused before you run, run down the road on this, is that we, we, I still feel like we haven't quite come to an agreement here as to what it is that we all want to do with the properties and before we bring in a consultant to work out some of the performance and financials and things that you talked about in your proposal i think we need to get a decision here as to what we want uh the consultant to work on because we're asking them to go ahead and create uh, uh you know basically scope this thing out how, how would it work how could we accomplish it and uh and i i, I still feel like we we need to kind of get into agreement on what we want to build there, what we want to do with it. Or at least if we can't gain consensus, 
if it was two or three items, I think we had talked about going back to the citizens and asking for their input as to what they want. Again, wouldn't that be before we would bring in a consultant? Yeah, so I, I popped it back up here. So this is the scope of the BDA, the Bruce Dees and Associates project work they would do. So they'd start off by reviewing the prior work we've already done, look at all the things we've done, bring that out, assess this existing site information. So what we know about the wetlands and the surveys that are available, and then use that for a gap analysis. What do we yet need to know? And then that kind of inform, informs the rest of their project. They develop a project charter and we would check in, they would check in with council and say, here's the project charter, what we think we're going to go do for this multi-use a park facility, and then conduct that needs and market assessment, go out and look at the community demand, kind of use the fund, the Lund faucet material we had from before, but amplify that and look a little bit deeper, make sure we hit all the demographics from young to old, wealthy to not so wealthy, active to not so active, those kinds of things. So if I could stop you for just a second. Sure. When I see the words develop project charter, to me, that is, are they going to develop what it is we're going to build there? What do you no. define as those words? That project charter, they define the charter of this project. Working with us. Working with this. So that's going to be an agreement. Agreement. That's their contract with you right. as to what work they're going to do for the rest of the plan, rest of the project to get to a master plan. But do, again, um, what they're going to do with us to create what? I mean, that's where I'm, I'm sorry. I'm well, so the project charter is going to say things apologize. like, this is their supposition so far. The project charter is going to be, we are going to look at a multi-use recreational facility at the Dobson Remillard Church and Cook property that addresses various needs in the community. And then the first step is going to be conduct that needs and market and market assessment, develop a base map. They're going to talk about, we're going to, here's the maps they're going to provide for us from an engineering standpoint, site capacity, assess the wetlands and buffers. What do we have to do? We have to fill them, mitigate them, move them, avoid them, something like that, because that makes a big difference of development capacity. So their, their project charter is defining these steps I see after they, they get deep enough into it. Remember, they've only done a little bit of work because we haven't paid them yet. They're going to say, what do we have to do? So that charter is going to define these steps. I think I see sense. where the disconnect is. The disconnect is, to develop a multi-story, what'd you call it? Public facility? Multi-purpose public facility. Multi-purpose public facility, which we haven't facility. defined what that is. Well, is yet. We haven't defined it because where we left things off in 2021, where we did the felt exercise, hmm? where we took what we thought were relative scale representations of uses, parking, the different uses, Boys and Girls Club, a field, a performing arts center. And we did a very rudimentary put it on felt and we think it could fit. But before we can get to the programming, we need to have the consultant work to do more formal site planning to see what area do we actually have? Can we make all those things fit in there so we can then make decisions on if there's not room, what goes in, what doesn't go in. But, okay, here, and here's where I get confused. If, if you're not telling him what you want to put in there, I wanna put a performing arts center in there. I wanna put in a multi-purpose, um, uh, public, uh, 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 what do we want to call it? I mean, the words keep changing. Civic Center is the one I started with because that's what most of the grants are about. Uh, we also talked about the uh, Boys and Girls Club. We talked about a, a, a number of different things. So how do we hire a consultant if we're still not in agreement up here as to what we want to see built? Why don't we get into agreement with that first? Because we were and left bring things the off where in. we weren't couldn't come into agreement because we didn't know what capacity we have on the site. And that was the next step we agreed we were going to take was a higher consultant to help us more formally analyze, not on felt, but actual engineer, not engineering, but an actual planner putting it on a site plan, taking into account our parking requirements, our wetland constraints, our storm drainage requirements, all those types of things. So we could see what space we actually have so that we could then come up with that design. So you just said the same thing. Do we have the space to build X. We got to tell them what X is. We You're saying uh, what I'm hearing is it's a. It. Yeah, we haven't find it. So we got to define what it is so the consultant can go out and determine if it can be built. Councilmember Cavallari. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, it's my understanding of, of what we're the agreement we're going to enter in here with is that the consultant has the ideas of what the mayor just said. What we put on felt, we would love ideally to put 
two more ball fields and a multi-use facility and plenty of parking to go around for the neighborhood, but we don't know if we can fit it. So they're going to tell us, hey, the field is a bad idea. The civic center, you're going to have to shrink it down by 60 feet or, or perhaps less parking on this side of the street exactly. and you've got wetland over there. So uh, that's what I assumed this was, we were entering into here to, to take our fantasies out and put reality in. You know, and I appreciate exactly what you just said because you never mentioned the Performing Arts Center in your analogy of all the different That's things you asked them to look at. So without, you know, your, your understanding of what they're going to look at is different than what I think they should be looking at. So I don't think we're there, Mayor, to move down this road until we get an idea of what we well, want. Let's, so let's try to them. expedite this. Does anyone else have any disagreement or questions about where we're heading with this contract other than Council? Why don't, why don't we try to find a consensus, Mayor, rather than trying to just shut something down and move I'm on? I'm not trying to shut it down. I think You're there exactly is a consensus. That. You're exactly doing that, Mayor, right now. No, I'm That's not. That's exactly what you're doing. You're trying to shut down this conversation what? by saying if anybody else has Council any Member concerns. Allison. Whether we ultimately know that the public has more interest in a, a civic center or a boys and girls club is sort of irre irrelevant to this part of the process because we don't know how much land we can use and we don't know what the capacity is. So and we need more public engagement. So this phase of the project makes perfect sense to me so that we then know what kind of space allocation we have, where parking can be, et cetera, how the land can be used, then, and we'll get more public engagement information out of this too. So we would then be able to come to consensus around what we want to have in that space. But right now we don't know if we have 10 feet to use <laughs> or, you know, we we don't know what our parameters are until we have some engineering study done on the land. Council Member Duque. Thank you. Um, so I had uh, two questions for um, our Director Todd. The first is when will I be able to do the felt exercise uh, with uh, Council Member uh, Allison and with Council Member Paddock? I think we threatened to let you come in anytime you would like to play. Okay, so we're not waiting for the three of us to schedule. We can just no. If if the three of you want to do it together, that's cool. Or if you want to come and do it individually, we can schedule that. I'd be happy to accommodate all all three of you for that opportunity. I love a good threat. Thank you very much. And the other is, I actually um, I had that same kind of comment as uh, Councilmember Steckler about the project charter. Um, and so I would find it helpful if um, if they could give us or if you could send us an example of what because I was assuming the same thing that it's more construction based. So if there's an example of what they, uh, what their deliverables would be, uh, maybe from something from a past project or, you know, what, you know, just so that we can see what it looks like for those of us that are not in the know, um, if that's a possibility, or maybe there's a previous project that you could point me to on the website that we had a project charter that would align with what this contract is. I'm happy to look there. If you could just point me in the right direction. Yeah. So I think, let me, so this sort of recap or on this slide, this is what we are going in with, this is our consensus. So there's the performance center, the community, performance-based community center, some ball fields, Boys and Girls mm -hmm. Club, et cetera. These the open tasks was developed that development, confirm that development capacity like you've been talking about. And here is the deliverables of what they're doing, which as I brought forward, but here they are again. So review where we were, assess the site information. This is the, as the project charter is after the gap analysis, they're gonna say, what is left to be done? And it's the project of developing a master plan. Gotcha. So again, because I'm not familiar with what that looks like or what, you know, what, what that deliverable, when I read project charter, I understood it had something to do with the next steps, but I, I, I wasn't sure what it physically, what I would see. Um, and, but now I, I, I understand what you're saying that it's, it's project charter is the next steps. Once they've done this analysis, it's that, that background or information we're doing. So thank you for that. Yeah, this is a new slide that Karen pulled up some information for me, and Karen's in the audience, so you can help if I needed, but really maybe that would help, because maybe we were using terms that aren't familiar with, but a, what's a parks and recreation master plan, or in this case, a master plan for our project is going to have these kinds of things, and it talks about it's a comprehensive process that gives guidance and policy direction to local government decision makers, it engages the stakeholders, garners public input, provides a foundation for understanding and responding to the parks and recreation needs of a community, and strategically examines the community's vision, existing community facilities, services, resources, assesses assessing future needs concerning parks, recreation, open space, and open space and greenways. So that's very broadly what you do with a master plan. 
the kind of thing you do is you look at reviewing existing conditions. That's what we're talking about doing. Analyze the needs and preferences. You develop a prioritized plan. That's what they're going to do for this project. And then you guys will, then you as an op, as a council will adopt and implement that plan. And all the way along the way, this slide is pointing out that you want to engage your stakeholders. And here's some benefits of understanding of undertaking a parks master plan. I like that phrase down there on the green. Successful master planning process transforms a community's vision into tangible plans to create outstanding recreation opportunities, well-maintained facilities, and a customer-focused and responsive park system. So picture their project charter is going to be our specific version for DRCC that fulfills that those words in the green. That's what they're talking about, a project charter. It gives us our, our North Star, to use uh, Andrew Ballard's term. That gives us our North Star for this project because this is going to be the most significant. This is going to be the biggest park we've ever done by five. It's going to be the biggest monetary project we've ever done by five or more. This is a legacy project. This is going to be a big deal for the community. So we really want to have that North Star firmly established in this process. We believe is what it's going to take us through that. Councilmember Paddock. I guess why I jumped on wanting to go forward so quickly was, as I understood it from what you had presented, was what BDA is going to allow us to do is understand what is physically possible and what does the community desire. And then we can go back and say, how do how do the options that we have in front of us fit into those two things? I just see this as the next logical step, not to mitigate or to take out anyone's ideas, just to understand what is possible. Councilmember Steckler. So I wanted to originally push my button for Councilmember Allison's comment. <clears throat> um, when, when you said there's not enough space for everything, so this helps us to determine what's what's right. Um, there is enough space for any one thing, that's for sure. So the question is, um, before we move ahead with the master plan, my original idea when we started this years and years and years ago um, was that we ultimately would take our ideas to the citizens to gain input from them before we would put together a master plan, because we, we need to know if we say, yes, you can do ball fields and you could do a civic center and it'll fit just fine. And yet the number one thing the citizens want was the performance center, let's just say. So what actually we need to- Frisbee golf. I'm sorry, what'd you say? <laughs> it was actually Frisbee golf. Or it could be Frisbee golf, okay. I think, but seriously, the, the point is, you know, for us to go down one path and find out that's, you know, I'd like it to be a path that the citizens want as well. We've given a lot of thought up here as to different options. We take it out to them, but if it's, if it's something they want or they would support that they would value, then we are, you know, we as elected officials are working in concert with, you know, our the people who put us up on the dais here. So I didn't want us moving ahead with a master plan until we make sure we get the input from the citizens. That's the point. And I saw that moving ahead without getting the input from the citizens first. Uh, it was finding out what was available did, there, did what you, we could do there. Did you bring the scope, Mike? Have, I don't know if everyone's reviewed the scope. It has up to four opportunities for getting public input on developing the master plan built into the process. Yes. I, I think it's important, go back to the slide you put up uh, that uh, where we ended up in 21. Okay, let's see. So I think that was enlightening. Uh, uh, Mayor, can I ask one question? Yeah. Yeah. Are, are we just getting hung up on the words here, whether we call it civic center, an arts center, a municipal building or whatever, because if that's the case, I don't think there were three other members on the dais here willing to dedicate this whole property to an arts center like you're suggesting. So, I mean, if that will cut this conversation off the pass, uh, you can make a motion. Well, let me ask you a question, Councilman. What if 80% uh, of your citizens said that that's what they wanted? Would that make a difference from what the council wants? Well, then this analysis would figure that out. I didn't see that in advance of the master plan. And that's where I was confused. And that's why I was asking that question at the beginning of this conversation. Well, let's take a step back, John. Where we ended up is right there in 21. No one argued for one use on the site. We all laid the felt out in different ways that all had those components. Well, those of us that were there, three of you weren't, but those of us that were there all laid out that had all those items on there. No one laid out, I just want X. There was no one layout that had just sports fields or had just a performing arts. There was. And Mayor. we discussed that our next step then was to take that and see if what we had put on felt was realistic. 
so that we could then make some final decisions and take to the community and get input on with those constraints, what do they want to see develop there? Now you're bringing up a, a, a different one. Let me on that oh felt pieces that you're talking about that we did here. That exercise, Director Todd, our, is is our consultant going to go through and analyze each one of those directions? I didn't hear that. I didn't see that. I thought they were doing their own. So I just apologize. Maybe I went really quickly. I probably should have started slower. But so January 10th, we talked about that, and that's where we're starting with the base work is we're going to give them all we've done, all of those council packets, the felt, the pictures, all those things, and say, here's what's going on. They're going to look at what we also have from an engineering standpoint. And that's where we're going to, we're going to say, would these kinds of ideas fit? Because this is where you, as a council, ended up in 2021, so three new members. But the, we said, generally, multiple compatible uses may evolve as planning progresses. And the next step was to confirm that development capacity where nearby options who are the partners, additional community input. So they've got community engagement, about $40,000 of this money going towards community engagement. And then refine and clarify those visions and options. And through working with the, with the community, I think there's like eight meetings total, four of them with you, to, to keep checking in and say, what are the here's preliminary concepts and how do you get to a concept? And that a concept is gonna have multiple uses because you've defined that you wanna have multiple uses on that property. Might what be I, a community center, might be some trails, might be some ball fields, might be a boys and girls club. Those are all the elements you you talked about as being important to the community. So that's their that's their charter. That's their their objective is to satisfy that basic need for multiple uses. Okay, Mayor Pro Tem. Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, sorry, I've had my light lit up. I just wanted to point out and take us back in history to the fact that we did begin this process and we did start to have some prelim, prelim, preliminary polls and receive data from the community. So it's not like we are starting at ground zero here. We have started to talk to the community and three of us went and doorbelled and talked to all the community. I personally doorbelled 3,000 doors and talked to every single one that I talked to about what did they want. So we are not at ground zero. We have gotten some input. And so from there, we did the felt exercises. And then from that, we're taking this and moving forward. We are, with this, we need to know that we want some kind of building there. Um, we obviously have not decided what all will be in that building. Um, it is clear to me from the community that they want more than one thing in that space. They want a multitude of things. So this idea that we have to keep stopping because we need it to be one thing that one council member wants us to have, it is not helping us move forward. We, we are at a point right now where we need to be able to move forward. They are gonna do multiple more community engagements where they're gonna get input from the community to shape the overall vision of what will be in whatever building they determine we have space for. So I don't see any reason why we should not move forward. And to say that we have not gotten any input from the community and don't have any idea is, is a false statement. Who said that? The, the, let's, no one said the, that. The, the, the decision is not before us tonight whether to move forward with this contract. The direction that staff sought was direction on whether to proceed separately with the real deal, and I think there was consensus on that point. I think we beat this horse to death on the scope. If you, This will come up for a vote at the next meeting. If you want to disagree with the scope of work, that's when we can have the discussion of whether and how we move forward with the contract. I think everyone said their piece. We understand where everyone stands on the contract. I think we can leave it at that for tonight. It's not it, before us for action I'll work tonight. with Karen to try to, to try to bring back that scope. We don't want to burden you with a 12 page document. We'll try to uh, elevate some so we can un all understand and fi feel good about the scope and what this project charter means. That's a term they use. It sounds like they have confused it. So we'll work on clarity in our presentation in a couple of weeks. Only if it's a question, Councilmember Cavalier. It is. Thank you, Mayor. Would it be possible, because I found the felt exercise really helpful, just like Melissa Duque just said. And we have pictures of it. 
if we can display those pictures, thank yeah. you, because it, it lets we'll you include that in the packet for the thanks. next. Meeting. I'll tell you one of the things that Karen's been preparing. We haven't pulled it out yet. We were kind of putting this together for the next step. Was kind of a notebook of some of the things we've done, and we got the photographs of the built exercise in there. But we can bring them back out here. So I think re re elevating that. It's been a long time. We've been through a lot of things together as a city since then. So re elevating some of that material probably help us back. Were we going to be able to have someone from Boosties here to help? put words to what's on paper for their scope? We probably can, yeah. I, I can't speak for their Tuesday night, two weeks from now, but I would imagine we get somebody to help us. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mike. Okay, it brings us to our consent agenda. Item A, payroll and benefit ACH payments in the amount of $285,071.05. Council, or audit committee was myself and council member Cavalieri. Were there any exceptions? No exceptions. No exceptions. And item B, City Council meeting minutes of December 13th, 2022, January 24th, 2023, and January 31st, 2023. Do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The uh, consent agenda is approved. City Manager, your reports, please. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I currently do not have reports. I'll hand it over to our Deputy City Manager with uh, reports. Thank you. All right, so just a couple quick updates. Um, so for the Street Sweeper, we will be submitting a letter of intent to purchase um, one of the Street Sweepers. We will be coming back on the 28th with an agenda item um, to get that official uh, purchase approved. Um, we would, we are planning on moving forward with the deputy chief position um, just to get that posted. At this point in time, we do not have a final salary. We don't know what the final benefits will be, um, depending on what this person, um, if they have a family that they would be covering. So what that end cost would be. Um, we do know that it will be a two-year uh, termed regular position um, for the offer letter. And so I just want to give you that update. We are hoping to get that posted tomorrow. And then we will um, begin having a uh, some kind of a document that we'll attach to each agenda um, on the status of each of our projects um, for ARPA. It's the interim status before you have to bring something to us in the form of a contract for approval. Correct. Any questions? Any other reports? Staff. Thank you, Mayor. No, no other reports. Okay. Uh, the only thing I wanted to bring up is um, I think uh, the city manager forwarded the summary of our planning retreat uh, the other day. And it was something that occurred to me as I was reviewing it today. Um, I think there was consensus to the revised mission, vision, and core values. But if someone from the community wanted to see how or if we ever adopted it, it'd have to go through and listen to the tape of the retreat to hear the discussion. So I've asked the city attorney to bring for our consideration at uh, the first meeting in March a proposed resolution so we could, if we so are, are so inclined, consider and formally adopt the mission and vision and core values that were presented to us that I think there was consensus on. So that'll be probably at the first meeting in March. I'll miss the meeting next week. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, any report tonight? No report, Mayor. Council Member Steckler. Uh, just uh, one announcement. The um, uh, Arts and Beautification Com uh, Board um, has unveiled uh, its latest uh, wrapped power box. Um, the good news is the artwork that was provided was provided by the uh, Mill Creek Seniors from the Mill Creek Senior Center. Yay. Sorry, Nathan, you missed that. That was really good. Um, and the box is uh, somebody here mentioned about incorporating other areas of the city. This box is in the northeast uh, uh, corner of Mill Creek. It's at the intersection of 132nd, which is our border, and 25th on you know our side of the street, uh, down uh, halfway uh, from the Lowe's towards the Albertson. So we're getting the you know corners of the of the uh, city boundaries established. I think this is our fifth power box that's been wrapped, and the artwork done by the seniors is exceptional if you get a chance to drive by and take a look at it it's uh, really wonderful yeah anything else no councilmember cavalieri no report councilmember allison 
Um, I don't have a report, but I do have a question, and this is maybe for um, the city manager and maybe for the chief. Um, there's been a lot of um, community discussion around the North Creek Trail and the homeless encampment that's off of the trail and um, the trash and that sort of thing. I know we're gonna spend Earth Day, you know, maybe cleaning it up a bit, but um, is there any other details that you could share with the community? We've gotten a lot of, uh, well, a handful of uh, residents uh, contacting the city with, with those concerns on the North Creek Trail. Uh, we understand the, the it's fairly heavily used up for the town center and uh, we, the chief is aware of the activity up there. Um, uh, as you mentioned, Earth Day will uh, temporarily take care of this. Uh, in the middle of March, we're going to bring uh, to council um, an outline of kind of what our program is moving forward uh, in terms of anti-camping and homelessness. And so that uh, will summarize kind of things, the program that we're going to implement, or we is, we partially have um, that will address uh, these issues moving forward in the future. And so, um, in terms of the details of, of North Creek Trail, uh, some of the pieces of the, the pavement there uh, are uh, public property, and there there are sections of it that are uh, city owned, and a lot of it off the trail is private. So. Uh, We'll have to be work probably with the, uh, and I'll let Director Todd elaborate a little more if he if he needs to in terms of um, the accessibility of um, volunteers and staff going on those properties and, and ensuring that's cleaned up. Um, we're fortunate to even have the people actually that contacted us are willing to volunteer. So um, a lot of the individuals are just concerned about. Um, not only concerned about what's the trash that's out there and and, and what's happening, but also uh, they're just not aware of if, if we as a city are aware of what's going on. And so they were happy to hear that uh, uh, we are cognizant of, of everything that's going on. So um, I can assure you from a from a community standpoint, from the people who have contacted us that we're, we're good in that respect. Thank you, much appreciated. Councilmember Duque. Um, my only, I was going to um, say that I saw the art wraps um, all, all, all on 132nd. That is my main route. That's what I drive. And it was really fun to see uh, this morning when I drove past that it was great. And I am um, fully supportive of additional ones and this project. I think it's a fantastic way. And I, I hope um, we'll continue to um, support the Arts and Vacation Board. Thank you. Council Member Paddock. It's just a last word to just reiterate appreciation for the incredible work the staff did under some really difficult, difficult conditions last year. And uh, and looking forward, just an awesome job to the comms team for putting structure and um, what looks to be a really terrific year of community building where no one has to risk their personal health just to keep up with it. So really appreciate that. And glad uh, Scott's going to be safe coming back from the mountains. It brings us audience communication. Anyone in the audience seen shaking heads negatively? Anyone online like to address the council? Mr. Nelson, name, address, three minutes, please. Uh, Will Nelson, 14925 29th Drive, Southeast Mill Creek. Uh, last week, the comment was made about are we getting our uh, full measure of sales tax? Uh, Due to the lateness of the meeting, I made no comment, but that's been brought up twice in the last many years. Um, once by Bart Masterson during the Great Recession, and I think once by the former mayor. And the response in two times has been from the state that we're losing out only on the margins. And so I think they have a pretty good handle on that. Um, as far as the DRCC, um, I would personally be appreciative if the city would quit uh, 
raiding uh, REIT money for the DRCC um, and use it for roads. Um, I also thought that the presentation made several years ago by some gentleman who I don't remember who apparently had access to funding for facilities was the best proposal that we've heard so far. And whether or not there's a performing arts stage on that um, is immaterial to me. But I thought that gentleman had the best deal going. And as for pickleball, um, I think pickleball is the most obnoxious, obscene, terrible sounding uh, sport I've ever seen and heard since my neighbor was playing it in his backyard on his sport court. And I would prefer that if I uh, never heard of the term pickleball again, uh, to be appreciative. And that's all I have in the way of a joke tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Will. And on that note, we're going to adjourn to executive session to discuss the performance of a public employee per RCW 42.30.110 subsection 1G. No action will be taken when we're done. What, 45 minutes to start, you think? Okay, can we, let's take care of, let's extend the regular meeting to 9.30, we good? Motion we'll, to extend till 9.30. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Okay, the regular meeting is extended till 9.30 and we will go start by going to 8.55 if my poor math is correct. Okay, so with that, we will be in recess for 45 minutes.
council extended executive session until 9 30.
Hello, hello, hello. Is anybody, Is anybody up there? there? Hey, uh, I need one more, please. Oh, we got four. Four. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Sorry, didn't see you come out. Um, Go ahead. Move to it. I move to extend the regular meeting to ten thirty. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That passes for nothing, and we will extend the executive session, Naomi, till ten o'clock. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Naomi. Hey, Naomi, are you there? I think I am. And I'm trying to assign everybody back in. So just oh, okay. and unsign out. Yeah, sorry about that. Here we go.
Council is extending executive session until 10, 10 p.m.
Naomi, are you there? I'm here, Mayor, in case uh, she stepped away. Hey, Joe, you still here? I am still here. <laughs> Need a couple of you in here just so we have a okay. quorum when we join during the meeting. I'm here. <laughs> I see. Okay. John's still in the room. And if there's no objections, I'll adjourn the meeting. We conclude our executive session at 10 03, a few minutes early, but no action is being taken. So we'll be adjourned and reconvene in two weeks. Yep. Two weeks. Two weeks. Some of you will. Bye. Good night.